Greetings and gratitude to all light forms and life workers who found this 31 day of card magic day number 14. I'm your host Yul Innes, you can call me the third eyed lion. Today we will be discussing spreads part 1. There will be a part 2 uh, going live tomorrow. Today we will talk about four um, different types of spreads. Uh, there will be more in other videos. So we're going to start with the Visconti from the 1400s. So I will read here. The various known methods of spreading the 22 major arcana are numerous and some of them are exceedingly complicated. Nothing written in the mid 14th, sorry, mid 15th century Italy about spreading the Visconti Pax for divination has descended to us. Dating back several centuries, the Celtic cross spread explained here is one of the earliest and most effective methods. After a few practice readings, this me method will become quite natural and easy to use. So I will uh, discuss um, the 10 card Celtic Cross. I'm going to read from this book here. So this is only with the major ar arcana. So you would take the majors out and shuffle them together. Here's what the spread will look like. One, two, will go on top of each other. So the first card, this is the present position, atmosphere in which the questioner is presently working in slash living shows the area of influence in which the questioner's presence exists and the atmosphere in which other concerns are working this card represents the person asking the question so that's the card in the center and understand that um, finding these spreads wherever you are there's a lot of resources for spreads you can change them you can modify them they don't always have to mean the same thing, but these are just ways to start and ways to begin the process. Okay, the second card is the immediate influence. Shows the nature of the influence or the in immediate sphere of invo involvement or obstacles which, which lie just ahead. This card cross crosses the questioner. Number three, goal or destiny. This shows the ultimate goal or destiny of the questioner, indicates the best that that can be accomplished by the questioner based upon existing circumstances. This card may also represent the questioner's aim or ideal within his present frame of reference. This card crowns the questioner. Card number four, distant past foundations. This shows the broad and basic events and influences that existed in the distant past and upon which the present events are taking place. It is the basis of fact already pressed into passed into accuracy and which is embodied within the questioner. This card is behind the questioner. Card number five, recent past events, shows the most recent sphere of influence or events that have just passed or that are just now happening this card may also represent distant past influences that exert pre pressure on recent influences of the in ordinary strong nature this card is beneath the questioner so the first five and then card number six, the future influence shows the sphere of influence that is coming into being in the near future. In a broad sense, this card is before the questioner. After d the diviner has read the foregoing six card, he then proceeds to turn over the next four cards of the deck. 
they are placed one above another in a line right next to the, s the previous six cards as shown in the diorama. Card number seven represents you, the questioner. Show the shows the questioner in his or her present position or attitude within the circumstances surrounding them. This card attempts to place the questioner in the proper perspective. Card number eight, environmental factors, shows the questioner's influences on other people and his position in life. Reveal those tenuous those tendencies and factors that exist with respect to other persons who may have an effect on the questioner. Inner emotions shows the in, inner ho hopes, hidden emotions, and secret desires, fears, and, and anxieties of the questioner, including those thoughts that will come into the mind of the questioner in the future. This card may also reveal secrets that the questioner keeps from other people and ulterior motives that, that concern the questioner. Okay, card number 10, the final result, sh shows the culmination and results that will be brought about from all of the influences that are revealed by the other cards in the divination. Provided events and influences continue as indicated. After reading each individual card, the diviner should go back and interpret the cards as they relate to each other. Fears and anxieties of the questioner, which helps to explain the significance of the other cards. The relationship between several cards may indicate a trend or pattern. The cards may reveal the changing position, the changing life pattern of the questioner, and the areas of new direction which they are advancing. Here's a diorama again, if you would like to pause the video to get more detail. Interpretation. The interpretation revealed in the Celtic cross spread may vary slightly from reading to reading, since the questioner may have one or more overlapping issues. Thus, the diviner should seek to interpret the cards as spread in the manner which feels the most comfortable. Always bear in mind that the titles of the cards, the divinary suggestions of each card, and the descriptive name of each of the ten sequence spaces in the card spread are meant as suggestive references. The card frequencies reveal considerably more about the questioner than solely a response to the original question. Therefore, the diviner, through patience and intuition, should read the cards freely, allowing personal int introspectives and ideas to come to mind. The symbolic cards may suggest emotions, feelings, and desires. They may, they may stand for objects or persons. They may indicate circumstances and duration of time. The, the interpretation of each card's singularity and in connection with other cards is limited only by the total representations and capability of the diviner or interpreter. After a reading is completed, and before starting a new reading, the diviner should remember to place the cards back in their original sequence in order to wipe away the currents and influences remaining in the cards from completing the reading. A questioner should, al should be allowed no more than one reading per day as to avo avoid any confu confusion that might arise due to continuously adjusting currents and influences. This is not meant to suggest that a second reading produces an interceptive inconsistent with the previous reading. Rather, influences and circumstances at one moment may vary in intensity from the vibrations of the next moment and thus cause confusion. One interpretation per day per questioner yields the most perceptive and concise reading. So, that is one of the most popular spreads. You can use any deck, 
any system. It doesn't have to be tarot. It can be anything to use the Celtic cross. This is just one way, as it says, your skill, your interpretation, your way of doing things, that's the most important. It's, that supersedes the spreads. So, that is one of the oldest spreads that we have. It's called the Celtic Cross. It is very popular, and you will see oftentimes that is one that is used very commonly. So, the next spread I will talk about is quickly is one that I have heard about through the internet. It is the one I use the most. It is called the Lover's Spread. You pull three cards. One card will represent the Divine Masculine. One card will represent the Divine Feminine. One card will represent the Divine Cosmic or Spiritual. So one is Masculine, one is Feminine, and one is Cosmic. So when you give your reading, which energy is, you can either assign a spot, this card is the Masculine, this card is the Feminine, this card is the Divine, or you can do what I do is just let your intuition tell you which of the three spots they're in. If it's in the divine spot, this is the highest uh, energy that's involved, the most powerful frequency that's involved. If it's the masculine, it is the more intellectual, um, physical. If it's the female, it is the more emotional, etheric, uh, less physical. And you can usually tell this by the cards. You can use any deck, any system to pull these three cards spread of the lovers. That's my personal one that I enjoy using a lot. Okay, we'll move on. Now to the third spread out of four for this video. Next video will have four spreads as well. So, from the Celtic Cross, we move now to the Cross of Destinies. I will read this um, out to you, but I will first show the diagram. This is a very complicated spread. And, but it is very potent and has been used for a long time. This is also called the key to the universe spread. Okay, the methods of spreading the cards and examples. Okay, the method of the cross. Shuffle the cards and lay them out in, so this is generally done with Lenormand, but this can be done with any system of cards with with some modification. Shuffle the cards and lay them out in four rows of nine cards each. If a woman wants to ask advice from these cards, card 29, the lady, will represent her, and this will be her personal card. Card number 28, the gentleman, represents the man in her life, her partner or lover. If the cards are laid out for a man, this is reversed. Find the personal card that is laid out for the, the person asking the question and proceed with the fortune telling from there. All cards located to the left of the personal card represents the past of, adva of the advice seeking person. All of those to his or her right symbolizes the future. The cards located beneath the personal card portray the things the questioner is expected is to expect in the present in this system the personality of the questioner or the advice seeker is examined and explained in terms of his or her past present and future so here's an example of the cross let's suppose that an unmarried lady is asking us for advice. After shuffling the cards, we arrange them into four rows of nine cards each and attain a layout as depicted. First, 
we take a look at the card of the questioner or vice seeker which is the lady card number 28 next we look to the cards that lie in reference to the personal card in the past So the questioner has experienced uh, many personal setbacks that we can deduce from the card number 32, the moon. So going through this spread and just a lot allowing each one to go off of the meaning of the cards, whatever they are assigned to you. The method of the cross of destiny with the method of the destiny of the questioner is unveiled and the causes and consequences of her or his life situation are explained. The 36 cards are shuffled and arranged in four rows of nine cards. With the personal card being the starting point. So with the method and the meaning of each card and its explanation are studied, practically the location of each card is in relation to the personal card and the card number six, the cloud, is of importance for the interpretation of these cards. All cards are used and laid out in four rows of eight cards each and one row of four cards. So whatever system you use, the Cross of Destiny can be adapted to it. Find a, your own modifications. It doesn't have to be biblical. It doesn't have to be the way that it always has done. Find your way of doing it and know that that will be good enough. Okay, so I have one more way for today. And then tomorrow you will get the four other spreads. This is from the Shadow of Oz. Okay, this is the yellow brick road to awakening spread. You can pause this if you would like to get more images. This is a spread developed by Jeanette Boyer. Deal out seven cards in the for following order. While contemplating the question raised by the position. So the first card is the Toto position. What is my guardian power right now? Second position is the Scarecrow. How do I best awaken my innate intelligence? The second card is the Tin Woodsman. How do I awaken my sense of love and compassion? Card number four, the Cowardly Lion. How do I awaken my sense of self-esteem? Number five, the field of poppy. In which area am I asleep? Number six is the wizard. How do I find my way back home? Door to intuition, integration, and healing. No place like home for the seventh card. What blessing, gift, or resource has always been there for me? Wholeness. After... I create a special card layout and before I put it out into the world for public consumption, I make sure I try it out first. After all, if a spread doesn't generate useful insight, then what is the point? I was honored that the Shadow of Oz team asked to create a custom spread for their glorious new deck. Here are some examples how you can interpret each position. Um, Jeanette Boyer is a tarot author, deck creator, blogger, professional intuitive reader, and a AMZN Hall of Fame reviewer. Find her online at JeanetteBoyer.com. So that spread really helps if you have deliberate questions, if you want specific information, and to know more exact 
frequencies of things that are going on. So these are four spreads. You can use any system of cards, whatever you feel called to, whatever you're drawn to. Um, trust that that is probably the right one for you. And you can do multiple spreads. You can do no spreads at all. But just these are some that I have found to be helpful. And one more way to use your card magics. Thank you, everybody. And your time is gratefully appreciated. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow with the second part of spreads.